Nintendo shocked us all with that Metroid Prime Remaster shadow drop at the Direct. We're all waiting around for news about Metroid Prime 4, and what do they do? Nintendo totally distracts us with something awesome. Metroid Prime Remastered. Now, I distinctly remember Metroid Prime blowing my mind in 2002. You know, the graphics, the controls, the first person perspective, it was just all mind blowing. And just think about the cognitive leap that Nintendo made to make that game. Nintendo went from Super Metroid in 1994 to Metroid Prime in 2002. There was no game in between. Well, Metroid Fusion came out the day before Metroid Prime, but I don't think that counts. They went straight from this 2D game to having a huge hiatus for the Metroid franchise and then coming out strong with Metroid Prime. Nintendo changed so much for their approach to Metroid. So unlike Mario, who went from Super Mario World to Mario 64, or even Link, who went from A Link to the Past to Ocarina of Time, with Metroid Prime, Nintendo skipped the third-person perspective altogether. Think about how easy it would have been just to fall into a pattern and make a Metroid game that was 3D with a third-person perspective. It worked for the other games, worked for their other series, and we can't forget Retro Studios, the developer who made it possible. On their very first time out, Retro Studios made an absolute masterpiece with Metroid Prime. They took the concept of 2D Metroid that we all knew, but they had the vision for how to make it work in a 3D space. Just think about that. They made a Metroidvania work in 3D. That alone is awesome, and it's something that a lot of other developers tried and failed around that same time. Now, Metroid itself has always been more of a mature series, but Metroid Prime really took it to the next level. In Metroid Prime, the enemies are creepier, the environments are scarier, the whole world just feels so much more dangerous. And it's just the small things that really made that game really incredible. Like, I'm thinking about when you walk through a, a waterfall and these little droplets get on your visor and it obstructs your vision for a second. Like, that's a measure of realism that we hadn't really had in a Nintendo game until that point. Talon 4 was this huge living world and everything on it was trying to kill you. Scanning things throughout the world was like a critical part of that game. It was you as Samus trying to understand the world that you were in. It, it did so much for uh, making you feel like you were part of the game. It was really trying to give you this immersive experience that I, I don't think Nintendo has really captured since then. But as different as Metroid Prime feels, the DNA is the same. It's still a Metroid game, and that's what makes it so good. At the beginning of the game, you get a few blissful moments where you can use all of Samus's abilities and all of her weapons, then suddenly all of that gets taken away from you. It's a Metroid game after all, and you have to fight to get them back. You know, clawing through, looking in every corner of, of every piece of the world. It's, it's just a really fun experience getting all that stuff back and knowing how powerful you were at the beginning of the game and how powerful you will be whenever the game's over once you find all these pieces. But Metroid Prime, that was 2002, more than 20 years ago. But with the announcement of Metroid Prime Remastered at the Direct, I kept thinking to myself, I really love this game. I don't know if I really want to play it again. I don't want to upset those memories I have. I feel really nostalgic about playing it on the GameCube. Um, is it worth going back to? Is it going to hold up after all this time? After all, it's been 20 years, and there are so many games from that era that didn't age well at all. Well, rest assured, Metroid Prime aged very well. Within just the first 30 seconds of Metroid Prime Remastered, I felt this huge wave of nostalgia wash over me. I felt like I was a kid again, experiencing Metroid in 3D for the first time. This remaster takes everything that was great about the original and amps it up to 10. Most importantly, the controls have been redesigned for a more modern first-person shooter control scheme, which I just can't get enough of. But the environments look amazing too. And even the first-person platforming, something that I was never really that good at, it feels really good here. Maybe I'm just better at games now, but it feels really good. But the most important thing about this game, and really any Metroid game, 
is that sense of progression. You're slowly unlocking areas, you're finding weapons, you're finding abilities and different upgrades. And like piece by piece, as you discover the world and find different ways to traverse it, that's just such an awesome feeling that you don't get from a lot of games, especially 3D games. You know, as much as I loved Metroid Prime Remastered, I kept thinking, what would it be like if this was reimagined as a 2D game? And then that made me think about Metroid Dread and what Metroid Dread could look like in 3D. And for me, just seeing how, you know, this 3D game could be transferred to a 2D game or those, the 2D game could be transferred to a 3D game, just thinking about that and thinking about how well it would work because all the pieces are there, it, it just, it's just a testament to how good these games are. You could interchange between 2D and 3D, and the gameplay would still be so solid, the progression system, solid. It's, it's just all such good gameplay. Now, I still prefer 2D Metroid games, but honestly, seeing this new remastered version of Metroid Prime is really making me think twice. This is a powerful game that has totally captured my imagination. Again, and more than that, it's got me really hyped for Metroid Prime 4. Metroid Prime Remastered is a reminder of what good gameplay can do for a game. It can make it feel totally timeless. It doesn't matter if it came out in 2002 or 2013, it's still a solid game. If you're into Metroid, which I guess you are if you're watching this video, I think this is a game to pick up physically. Yeah, we've got the digital version on the eShop, but we've seen other Metroid games go way up in price later. I think this is one Nintendo might do a limited run on, and it's gonna be tough in a few years to find this remaster. I think this is one to pick up for your physical collection, for sure. And really quick, before we go, can we talk about Nintendo's stance on remasters? Is this the first game Nintendo has actually called a remaster? Sure, they've ported a lot of games over with some updates and some upgrades, but I don't remember any other game having remaster in its title. If you can think of one, let me know in comments. And hey, if you like Nintendo content like this, hit that like button and consider subscribing. We put out new content every week. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing.